Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Giant Rat Archaeologists working in the Brazilian Amazon recently discovered two fossilized skulls of a giant rat the size of a human. Yes, a rodent that could grow to be as big as a fully grown adult. The creature is called Neoepiblema acrinsis, and it lived 10 million years before today. Professor Jose Ferreira described the rat as an extinct relative of the chinchilla, 5 feet long and about 175 pounds. It also had two massive incisors that were curved for maximum damage. This was most certainly a formidable nightmare of a rodent, but it wasn't very intelligent. The team behind the discovery used all the most advanced technology at their disposal to study the brain cavities of these skulls that they found. They wanted to see if the animal's brain was large compared to its weight and size. And it wasn't. CT scans revealed the rat had a brain of only 4 ounces, way too small for a skull of such size. The takeaway is that the giant rat was kind of dumb. This has bigger implications than you might think. Researchers believe giant rodents like this may have gone extinct because the energetic cost of having a big brain was too much. They couldn't feed their brain, so their brain got smaller and they started to shrink. That's why all the rats today are smaller, but the rats millions of years ago were giant. Number 9. The Dragon In the desert of Chile, scientists identified the fossilized remains of what can only be described as a dragon. It's the first of its kind ever found in the southern hemisphere, and it's making big waves in the paleontological community. The creature in question is a winged lizard, a type of pterosaur that flew through prehistoric skies 160 million years ago. It had a wingspan of six and a half feet, a very pointy tail, ruthlessly sharp teeth, and claws. If you didn't know any better, you would think it was a fire-breathing dragon. In truth, it's more of a lizard. Scientists aren't exactly sure what species of winged lizard they came across in the Atacama Desert. It could be a ram It could be a ramphorhinkine. What rampho? It could be a ramphorhinkine, one of the two major kinds of pterosaurs. These were much smaller than the other main species called pterodactyloids which could grow wingspans of over 23 feet. However, the real difference was that these smaller pterodactyls had fully toothed jaws instead of beaks. They didn't have bird mouths, but alligator mouths that they used for catching fish and other marine mammals. The biggest and most exciting part of the discovery is the place where it happened. Researchers from the University of Chile say they are the first to reveal this kind of pterodactyl in the southern part of the world. Nobody had ever believed flying lizards existed at these latitudes. It just goes to show how little we know about the prehistoric planet. Scientists are even wondering if pterodactyls were migratory, like modern birds. Number 8. The Sonic Boom Dinosaurs were so big that some of them may have produced a supersonic boom just by wagging their tail. A team of paleontologists and aerospace engineers recently got together to see which dinosaurs could produce such a tremendous sound. They were mainly focused on long-necked sauropods, creatures that could grow to over 100 feet long. If you can make a sonic boom with a leather whip, imagine what you could do with a 20-foot tail. The theory has been out there for decades. Scientists have always suggested that if dinosaurs had bullwhip structures at the end of their tails, they may have used them as defense mechanisms. Herbivorous dinosaurs like sauropods, who didn't have teeth or claws to fight back, could have used their tails like Indiana Jones used his whip. Anything that got too close would have received a sonic boom to the face. One of the favorite dinosaurs that may have had this ability was the family of diplodocids, which includes the beloved Brontosaurus. The issue is that researchers have never found a completely fossilized tail from one of these animals. Researchers from Nova University in Portugal pieced together what little evidence they had to try and solve the puzzle. But when they finished their analysis and had recreated a tail using computer models, they were severely disappointed. 
Simulations showed that the brontosaurus tail could not break the sound barrier because of friction caused by muscles and vertebrae. There was too much aerodynamic drag. Maybe one dinosaur could make a sonic boom with their tail, but it wasn't a brontosaurus. If it even tried to do something like that, scientists say its tail would have snapped in half. And now for number seven. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Berenice for the super thanks. This is so helpful for us to keep making more videos for everyone and creating more fun things. So big thank you to you. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join us for more videos about mysterious discoveries, animals, and strange history. Number seven, the manta shark. In a quarry in Mexico, the fossil of a really weird shark with wings like a manta ray was discovered. It turns out this unique animal cruised the oceans over 90 million years ago. It was a bizarre shark-manta hybrid, something scientists named Aquilolamna bilarkae, something like that. It had an astounding wingspan of almost six feet, with a body length of only about four and a half feet. Romain Vulo from the University of Rennes was the one who helped describe the species. He said the shark's outrageous body shape and gaping mouth means it likely consumed plankton. Just like modern manta rays, it didn't need to go very fast to get the job done. And so it developed massive pectoral fins for slow propulsion. The shark used them to stay floating at a steady pace, working like an underwater vacuum to hoover up plankton. As of right now, there is only a single specimen, the one found at the quarry. For that reason, scientists don't know if it was a juvenile or an adult. If it was only a baby, the shark may have had a maximum length of about 9 feet. Scientists compared the fossil with the remains of 26 modern shark species, concluding it was an ancient relative of the Great White. Although it looked and acted a lot like a manta ray, it came into existence roughly 30 million years before manta rays and devil rays evolved. This particular shark then died off with the dinosaurs after the asteroid impact 66 million years ago. Number 6. The Nest Scientists in India discovered a cluster of dinosaur nests with a shocking total of 265 fossilized eggs. Paleontologists identified almost 300 titanosaur eggs scattered throughout 92 nests in the Narmada Valley. A find like this is unprecedented. Researchers revealed a lost prehistoric landscape, a remote valley where some of the biggest dinosaurs in the world once roamed. The lush Indian valley was like a dinosaur nursery millions of years ago. It's not even the first time dinosaur eggs have been found here. Villagers in the area have been coming across fossilized egg remains for decades. These egg nests were in use about 70 million years ago. Dozens of titanosaurs, which were about the size of a school bus, stomped their way to a riverbank and laid their eggs along its shore. Each nest contained anywhere between 1 and 20 eggs. But why those eggs never hatched is a huge mystery. Scientists have a ton of data they need to unpack, so it will likely be years before they reach any full conclusions. They don't even know if the eggs were all laid at the same time, during one season, or over many years. But perhaps the strangest part is just how close the titanosaur's breeding habits were to that of the modern crocodile. Scientists say the giant dinos laid their eggs in small nests near watery areas, partially burying them in soft sand. That's almost exactly what crocodiles today do showing yet another link between ancient dinosaurs and their crocodile cousins. Number 5. The Flamingo Monster Scientists have discovered a totally new species of dinosaur unlike anything seen before. The creature was kind of like a flamingo, only it had 400 teeth inside of its spoon-shaped beak. Scientists call it Balayan Gaza blah blah, I'll put it on the screen, and say it lurked around lagoons and other murky bodies of water. It hunted like a flamingo by dipping its beak into the water, then shutting its mouth, funneling out the water, and trapping its prey inside. The discovery of this strange new monster was a total accident. Researchers found its remains in a German quarry. Workers at the quarry were extracting a limestone block with the fossilized remains of a crocodile in it 
when they found a totally different animal. This thing belongs to the pterosaur family, an ancient breed of flying reptile. David Martill from the University of Portsmouth says it had long jaws lined with extremely small teeth like tiny steel hooks. Its long jaw stopped abruptly at the end in a shape like a vacuum attachment. This was where the water filtered out, while the prey got stuck behind the rows of teeth like the bars of a jail cell. Number 4. The Prehistoric Mantis The fossilized remains of a mantis from 110 million years ago is shedding new light on how these fascinating insects developed. One of the most interesting aspects of modern praying mantises is that they have spiky forelegs, which they hold in the famous praying position. The mantis waits absolutely still while in hunting mode, then shoots out a spiny leg when something like a cricket or a moth gets too close. It's a fascinating adaptation and one scientists want to know more about. The prehistoric mantis is a predecessor of the modern mantis, and its fossil is very rare. Finding any kind of fossilized insect is rare, never mind one in such good condition. Researchers were shocked to see the head and thorax clearly visible, and both pairs of legs. Even more shocking was that both pairs of legs had spines on them for catching prey, not just the forelegs. Ancient praying mantises must have used both sets of legs for catching their meals. It's not much information, but it does give scientists a small window into the world of prehistoric bugs. The praying mantis has been around since the Jurassic period, about 199 million years ago. Ever since, they've been diversifying. These insects have been around longer than dinosaurs and never went extinct. Number 3. Megalodon Teeth A nine-year-old girl in Maryland named Molly Sampson made the prehistoric discovery of a lifetime on Calvert Beach. The fourth grader from Prince Frederick spends her spare time searching along the sand of Maryland's many beaches looking for shark teeth. According to Molly, she was initially inspired by her father's obsessive love for fossils. And since Calvert Cliffs State Park is a local hotspot for fossil hunters, Molly's mother likes to take her there now and again to see what they can find. Last Christmas, Molly asked her parents for some new cold water waders so that she could go deeper than ever before. The young girl wanted to dive down along the shore to search for shark teeth and fossils in the Chesapeake Bay. Amazingly, the new gear immediately paid off. Molly went for a swim in knee-deep water and found her first shark tooth. She picked up the tooth from the sandy murk and realized she was holding a piece of an extinct megalodon. Molly and her parents took the tooth to the Calvert Marine Museum, where curator Stephen Godfrey confirmed the discovery. Molly found the tooth of a massive shark that lived over 23 million years ago. But even more shocking was how huge the tooth Molly found actually was. It must have belonged to a shark about 50 feet long, one of the most dangerous predators that ever lived in the Seven Seas. Number 2. A New Species of Terror An entirely new species of terror bird has just been discovered. Most of the frightening monsters went extinct about two and a half million years ago. Now, paleontologists have unearthed one of the most horrifying terror birds ever found. The skeleton is 95% complete, giving scientists a rare opportunity to study the anatomy of the giant birds that once terrorized South America. The fossil is only missing a few wing and toe bones, and it was excavated in northeastern Argentina. It's called Yaya Wavis Scaglii, a resident of the wide open grasslands of prehistoric Argentina. It weighed about 40 pounds and stood four feet tall, pretty small for a terror bird. Other species grew to be over six or seven feet tall and had such big beaks they could cave in other animals' skulls. There was something that stood out to the researchers immediately though. When scientists took CT scans of the fossilized bird's inner ear, they found it had an amazing sense of hearing. The canals inside the ear show the bird could swivel its head with exceptional speed, meaning it tracked its prey like radar. The bird only heard in low frequencies, which allowed it to listen across massive distances. The point is that this bird was a pro hunter, like a violent chicken with a skull made from iron about the size of a small human. Number 1. Prehistoric Patagonia A new study done by researchers at the University of Texas 
provided a unique glimpse at the diversity of Patagonia during the late Cretaceous period. Scientists looked at a massive list of fossils found on the Chilean portion of Patagonia, including fossilized remains of megaraptors, birds, reptiles, and mammals. The lead author of the study, Sarah Davis, says Patagonia was incredibly diverse just before the mass extinction event 65 million years ago. Patagonia was ruled by theropods between 75 and 66 million years ago. Carnivorous dinosaurs were the top predators in the food chain. There were two specific types, Megaraptors and Unanlen Gyanese. Megaraptors were 25 feet long and some of the most ferocious beasts that lived in South America during the Cretaceous. The Unanle Gyanese was a totally different kind of group, made up of carnivores from the size of a chicken to about 10 feet tall, all of them covered with feathers like velociraptors. These two groups were the savage monsters that stalked Patagonia for about 10 million years. Then there were the birds. Birds the size of sparrows, almost identical to modern birds now, lived all throughout Patagonia. There were diverse species, and there were even birds like geese and ducks. Some scientists believe places like Patagonia and the Southern Hemisphere didn't receive as much damage from the asteroid as other parts of the world. And for that reason, birds here thrived in a way they didn't anywhere else. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite prehistoric creature? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already! See you next time! Bye!